Jeff, uh, just give me your take. You know, start off with J.P. Morgan. Tell me what you thought of the quarter and what you thought of the commentary. Yeah, an interesting day, which we kind of thought it would be. Uh, for J.P. Morgan, I mean, if, if you backed out some of the non-current things, I wind up with 282 in earnings. That's exactly what they thought, we thought they'd be. So I thought it was, it was a decent quarter. I'm a little surprised to see the amount of rent on the screen, given kind of what they reported in some of the underlying fundamentals. Uh, you know, that the, the, the stock kind of illustrated there. And I do think that the, the, the commentary right before this about, you know, Jamie's outlook and that. I, mean, I think if you look back to kind of his investor day commentary and then maybe at that next conference a few weeks later and average the two, that's about what we got today. So it's cautious that there's a lot of uncertainty out there, but certainly not the, uh, you know, hurricanes going to come wreck us that, that people maybe were afraid of. Yeah. Uh, what's your take on the stress tests, on the buyback no longer being in place, uh, at least for the time being? Not a big surprise. I mean, we had the buyback going to like 120 million a quarter in the back half of the year. That's versus two and a half billion the first quarter and 18 billion last year. So if it goes to zero as opposed to 120 million, that doesn't really move the needle too much and let some kind of build the capital levels up the, the way we, we thought that they would. So <laughs> saying, saying they're suspending the buyback kind of, you know, has a stigmatism to it, I guess. But really, it's kind of what we're all expecting anyway. Hey, Jeff, um, we're seeing a lot of revisions uh, incorporating the prospect of Fed rate cuts next year. Does that lead to a situation where we're in an environment where net interest income is peaking or not? Yeah, it's interesting. If you look back over the last, you know, three, four quarters, it seems, we're always taking up our net interest income expectations and always say, feel like we'll be a conservative. At some point in time, that, that's got to stop. But I mean, at this point, hasn't stopped yet. You know, we thought Jamie Diamond or JP Morgan's 56 billion plus was conservative. They took it to 58 billion plus. But we're, we're going to come at a time where, you know, that, that's going to plateau and maybe even come down the other way. Uh, at this point, at least from what we can see, even if some cuts do come next year, I think the, the trajectory of that interest income is still is still a good tail when kind of into next year. But, you know, at some point in time, that comes. But it really seems, I think what investors are much more concerned about looking at the banks right now is credit. Uh, you know, higher rates is kind of known and understood. Credit's a thing people are really uh, concerned about and the uncertainties there. And what we got today was, hey, things are still really good, but they can't stay this good. And that's kind of what we've been continuing to get over time. So, uh, unfortunately, a lot, more, a lot more clarity kind of being provided on that front, yeah. Um, investment banking results, perhaps as expected, given the dearth of, uh, of underwriting, um, M&A has been going along, but obviously not at the pace of 2021. Anything, though, that we can look to in terms of what this means for Goldman Sachs uh, and or any other uh, firms that rely a lot on capital markets slash investment advisory activity? Yeah, I mean, I didn't find that the, the revenues reported today to be all that surprised. Trading is a little better. Um, it, it more than Stanley, a little worse at J.P. Morgan. Investment banking this week. I think a lot of um, surprises there, but the question, you know, remains. There's these busy pipelines. Clients are still engaged. How long does that continue in this volatile environment? Because it eventually uh, slow down. But I would kind of, you know, looking forward, think that, uh, you know, for the other companies reporting, you know, this this would be a, a good trading result for say a Citigroup, which is uh, big in FX, and probably relatively speaking, good news for uh, for Goldman Sachs as well. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.